Alright, we are packing up, doing some Things don't hold the vacuum for too long, but it'll be good enough to let us have room for our food for the first day. Food and extra water. Good. Hope we won Kenobi. All packed up, ready to go. What you got there? I got um my raw dogs, aka Vienna sausage. So I got a bit of a predicament. I tried to raise the mast, and this is the first time I used the uh, the official Hobie mast raising mechanism, and it kind of ripped out the bottom, and the ball didn't go in its home. Uh, over here, how are we doing? Yeah, it ripped out that rivet too, so it's only holding with one rivet. I might need to drill some more holes in there. Okay, crisis averted. We're back in action. Uh, it popped right back in there. I think now that there's pressure on there, it won't be an issue, but we'll definitely put some more, tap some screws in there. In the future, let's finish this up. addition is this, this Harbor Freight mat. I should have got some glue because I thought this would hold together better. It's kind of loose, but it's always setting it up. Got our rudders on, mast is up. I'm gonna inflate the dinghy, put it in the water, I guess. Oh. So last night we set up the Hobie Cat and anchored it out here. This morning, uh, we, we well, then we dropped the car off at Zoe's cousin, and this morning we Ubered back down here. Uh, we're leaving from Miami. I'm gonna row out on this little guy, this little boat. And then we'll load the last of our gear on the Hobie Cat. So it's floating a little lower than normal with all this gear. We'll see how it does. I think we might have a good forecast. So much stuff. All right, beginning of the trip, we're leaving Miami. Got the skyline over there. Pretty good wind. We got about 10 knots right now. Maybe gusts in 15. I think the forecast is going to be a little stronger. Maybe we get the forecast. A little, a little, I'm a little apprehensive just to go offshore. Uh, I'm, a bit, I'm a, little, a little anxious, but I think we'll be okay. We'll see. So leaving from Miami to going to, to the west end of the Grand Bahaman, Grand Bahama Island. Mm -hmm. um, 70, 75 miles, something like that? 86. 86? 86 miles. So we'll probably get in late tonight, maybe tomorrow morning if we can, if we can make it. Uh, we got out there in the waves for about four feet and we were just getting pummeled. I think it's left over from some strong wind we had yesterday. Look again, we'll try again tomorrow maybe. Woo. Yeah, we're just, I can, I can see that uh, cross member just flexing like crazy too. Would not want to be offshore when that thing broke. Uh, fortunately, we got a ways to get back now and it'll be out of upwind tacking probably. We'll see. But uh, today was not the day. Here's the track of our first attempt. The boat ramp we started on was over here. That's where I started tracking. Um, actually, before we went that way, we went around this way first, but it didn't really work out. So we went out this way, tacked away about the channel, and we were just getting pummeled by waves out here. So definitely not the right day to do it. We had a long way to go. 
and I'm going all the way seven, 85 miles up to uh, Grand Bahama Island instead of Bimini Island because I wanted, I wanted to make this trip a broad reach and that made the most sense. So we came back to this little island to regroup, figure out what we're gonna do for today. If we're gonna try again tomorrow or the next day. Oh no, the, the dinghy's hanging on the water. It's sad. I'm testing the, the bungee anchor. We got an anchor out there. And then I'm trying to pull myself back to shore. I think it's actually gonna work. It's a pretty stretchy line. So now I release the white line and the bungee pulls the boat back out to sea. Seems to be working actually. The problem is the Hobie like wants to go weird angles. It's kind of hard to pull it back and forth, but the principle is sound. So now in theory, all I gotta do is pull the boat back into me. I'm ready to go, go use it again. And I'll stay ashore away from shore when I let go. So well, we had we had to wait for the weather, so I got my hair cut. Looks pretty good, I think. I like when he used the air blower they, on They him. didn't speak any English at all. <laughs> Except using the translator app. I was like, okay, we'll see how it comes out. Uh, we're gonna take another stab at sailing to the Bahamas uh, this afternoon. But I went and got a compass at Dick's because I thought that would be a good thing to have so we don't have to keep getting out the phones. Now we're back at our little spot and, and hope you one Kenobi is still there. Um, it looks like there's white caps out on the water. Yeah, we're going to go for a walk <laughs> around and see if we can see how much wind and waves are on the other side of our island. And then if there's too much wind, we might just fake the video and pretend to sail to the Bahamas. We'll just sail back and forth in here. And then we could probably film this so it looks like it is the Bahamas. So there are some white caps about a quarter mile out, but I'm hoping that's just because it's so shallow out there. It might be a little bit of a reef. Um, and we get past them, it, it should be uh, even out a little bit. I think we're gonna give it a shot. You ready, Zoe? Ready, Zoe? We're, we're pushing off from Virginia Key for Bahamas attempt number two. Feeling better about this one? And if it doesn't work, we got one more try. This trip, I think. And maybe it'll be even better tomorrow. But it doesn't look too bad right now. How are you feeling, Zoe? We made it past the breakers. Things are calming down a bit. I think it might be doable today. It's a little bit wet. The wind's not too strong. We're on a good point of sail. All right, so we turned around again. We made it about uh, three miles further than last time. The waves are just getting pretty big and I, I don't think it would be good trying to sail on that overnight kind of right on the edge. Uh, kind of make me wonder how doable this is. It's definitely doable to do it in a Hobie cat. I know people have done it in windsurfers and stuff, but to also try to have stuff to go camping for like a couple weeks. Uh, it's a lot of gear uh, to fit on the boat and kind of manage. Um, totally doable to you know, cruise around like in coastally, but trying to do a passage like this in this kind of weather uh, with all this gear is proven to be pretty challenging. We'll try again, I think tomorrow, maybe the waves will be smaller. If we get calm conditions, I think it's totally possible. Um, but it just kind of beating into the way is just going to be pretty rough. One of the biggest factors we're going to have to contend with on this passage is the Gulf Stream current. You can see it gets up to four knots, maybe stronger in the middle there. Uh, that's why I chose to leave on this diagonal from Miami instead of straight across from West Palm Beach. The current will kind of drift us upwards. And uh, also with the, the strong current, you really have to think about the wind direction because if the wind's going against the current, it could be really big, big waves. Okay, th tonight we're gonna do a night sail attempt to the Bahamas and the waves might be smaller. It looks so calm out here, but it is a little rougher out there. The waves will, will be small at maybe eight to 10 p.m. So maybe we'll leave it like nine or 10. 9 p.m. Leaving this hellish island of no seams. This was our most miserable departure ever. Winds are pretty light. This is try number three for the Bahamas. We're gonna try sailing through the night, see if it's calmer. I think this, is, this will be our last try if we, uh, if we don't make it. 
But we're gonna make it. I feel like we got pretty good odds in today. And there's no turning back because I am not going back to the island of no see Fuck you. Yeah. It was horrible. Just, just awful. I'm gonna be poking at it tomorrow morning. 30 minutes in and off to a very slow start. We've gone maybe half a mile. If that, there's really no wind at all. But we'll carry on. Yep, we're doing it. And eventually we'll get into the Gulf Stream and that'll carry us, you know, northwards. Just enough wind to keep the boat, you know, on a heading at least. It's half after midnight, the wind has picked up a little bit and we are moving. Saying goodbye to Miami. So it's 85 miles to uh, the west end of Grand Bahama Island, like Freeport, or 44 to Bimini. So we're actually able to aim towards Bimini, so I'm going to aim there. And if we have to turn fair away, that'll be fine. Then we can get there maybe earlier tomorrow instead of uh, late tomorrow. About 10 miles offshore now. Winds are increasing, but still comfortable. We're going to the strongest part of the Gulf Stream current is four knots, so we are doing about eight knots at boat speed. Take this up here. You can kind of see the stars out there. The Big Dipper. Almost made it through the night. You can see the sun's just about to come over the horizon. It's a good feeling. Uh, I feel like we'll kind of warm up a little more. Although the water has actually been pretty nice and warm because we're in the Gulf Stream. The water depth in the middle here is over 2,000 feet. We went over. All right, so we got pretty good light now. I'm a little concerned. We're sinking. The hulls look like they're riding a little a bit lower than normal, um, but we're almost halfway, so I think it's clear we decided that we're just going to carry on. I can see the bottom of the black one too. It's so always not as worried as me. Sunshine, and we're still floating. Pretty good conditions. A little wet. I steered all night except for an hour and a half. Now it's always time to steer. I'm gonna take a nap now. We lost our cargo net. Uh, we didn't lose it. Well, it fell off and then we, we took it off. The cargo net is down. We gave, we, I don't think we lost anything off of it, so we're not too much further. So conditions keep getting uh, wetter, wavier, windier, and we just lost one of our rudder. We lost our port rudder, but the starboard one's still working good. 
about 24 miles to go. So we have the top of the rudder, it broke off uh, just at the bottom there. Uh, that rudder is still looking good. Hope we don't lose that. So we are coming up on the Bahamas to Old Bay, I think. Water well, is super clear. We just we just went over the reef. Got a little closer than I would have liked, but I didn't want to do the jive. And the water is like so much calmer on this side. We were surfing in on like four to five foot waves earlier. I didn't get a lot of footage because it was it was like just really crazy. It was all hands on deck. We had all the weight in the back of the boat, kind of keep us from pitch pulling. A couple of close calls where we buried a hole, but we made it without without uh, tipping the boat over. So. So if we can get into the harbor safe, we'll, we'll have made it. Made it. Hail the homie. <laughs> we made it to the Bahamas. We gotta kiss the land. Everybody told us it was a bad idea when we got here. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna sail back. That was maybe one of my worst decisions. The boat almost sank coming in too. It's got so much water in the holes. And we also cleared immigration. So. Only took an hour. This is Zoe's favorite part. We covered over 88 miles in just 13 hours, which I thought was pretty good. You can kind of see the boat is sitting pretty low. So we got all checked in with customs and got ourselves, we treated ourselves to a hotel room tonight. Um, and I don't know what a uh, slip costs here, but we don't have to pay it because I'm just gonna pull this thing up on the beach around the, the corner. Okay, so no worries at the helm. Here's a beach. To the right, to the right, you're gonna hit this guy. All right, so we beached Hobie, and I'm using my bungee anchor. So as the tide comes up, it'll pull it up onto the beach, and then we can empty the hulls tomorrow once it's out on the water, and we don't have to do anything. I really like the bungee anchor so far. Like, look how long it stretches, and it's only maybe like a quarter of that length once it's away, so it doesn't take up any room. So I was super surprised how awesome this hotel room was, uh, which is super essential because we gotta charge all our, our gadgets, and uh, you know, freeze our waters and uh, wash the laundry after that trip. Um, again, it was three three attempts to get here, plus two days to get here, basically. So pretty beat, and uh, this will be awesome. And then it's back out to the sailing. Can you feel that? Like the sun. Here's the us surviving. And to Hobie. And to you, Sam. And to me. The plants are coming. Looks like a bungee anchor did the job and it pulled the Hobie out of water at high tide. So now we can drain the hulls. Here's our sad looking starboard rudder. Good rudder. Oh yeah. Now for hole number two, this is the bad one. Oh man, look at this, Zoe. Yeah. So we're at least three minutes now, it's still gushing out. This hole is like, I think it's full. When we were coming in, this well, this uh, port side was the hull that was under the water, right? Because that was the leeward side when we were sailing over. Uh, so it got the most water in it. And when we were coming in, uh, we had to do a tack and step over to this side and the whole boat just went underwater. Like we almost, we actually almost sank coming into the break wall. 
uh, we had to get all the weight over there and it was pretty it was actually one of the hardest parts was getting them into the harbor uh, against the, the headwind log on there get there more slowing down finally minutes thanks for watching in the next video though we'll be cruising around the bahamas probably heading down to freeport i imagine uh, making a way you know along the island chain um if you got something out of the video please consider uh making a donation on paypal or patreon or uh, venmo there's like links in the description i do the youtube thing full time uh so it's very much appreciated um i'll see you guys next time